Instructions for accessing subtitles in a language other than English are included on our board meeting's webpage as well as in the description below. Instrucciones para acceder a los subtítulos en un idioma que no sea el inglés se incluyen en nuestra página web de reuniones de la Junta, así como en la descripción a continuación. Hello, it is Wednesday, March 1st, and this is the Ross Valley School District Board of Trustees regular meeting. We are at 7.10, so starting a few minutes late. I apologize for anyone out there who is listening. <coughs> Um, and uh, we will go ahead and get our meeting started, um, starting as we always do with our procedural items, which are the Pledge of Allegiance and the adoption of our agenda. Um, today, before saying the Pledge of Allegiance, just want to acknowledge the start of Women's History Month, which actually starts today, March 1st. Um, with some information that has been part of our curriculum and instruction. Thank you, Julia, for sharing. Um, but uh, part of just having an acknowledgement before we say our Pledge of Allegiance is um, also to reflect that we are here because of the kids and what they are learning and to support their learning in all of our schools and that what we do up here um, ties in with what they're learning and part of that is that they are learning about a, a lot of different people and their experiences and so to be able to build off of the curriculum and instruction work that is going on in the class to acknowledge it up here. Which means that part of Women's History Month, this is a hundred, I like the math that was put in there, a hundred plus three is the number of years women have had the right to vote. Um, this year in 2023, uh, Women's History Month theme is celebrating women who tell our stories. Throughout 2023, the National Women's History Alliance will encourage the recognition of women past, women past and present who have been active in all forms of storytelling, media, print, radio, TV, stage, screen, blogs, podcasts, and more. Um, and this theme will honor women in every community who have devoted their lives and talents to producing art or pursuing the truth and reflecting the human condition decade after decade. Um, there are, uh, there's a lot of information that the students in our schools are going to be learning about women in, through the Women's History Month um, activities that they'll be doing in their classrooms. Um, and learning about women and this theme of celebrating women who tell our stories. So looking forward to maybe seeing some of those stories that our students are going to create of their own stories. Um, so with that, I would invite us all to say the Pledge of Allegiance in thought and recognition for Women's History Month. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> all right. We um, now are looking at the agenda. Are there any questions or considerations for the items that are on our agenda? Fairly light agenda. If not, I'll entertain a motion to adopt. So okay. moved. Can you arm wrestle over that? Teresa, did you catch who was uh, seconding? I did not. So I motioned Anne. Second. <laughs> Ryan second. Shelly, I. Ryan. Aye. Rachel? Aye. 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 All right. Un <coughs> unanimous. Sorry. I oh, I gotta say that. Roll call. All right. Chris and Daniel, do you like to be called Dan or Daniel? Either, just not Danny. Just not Danny, okay. So, Chris and Daniel also. All right. Um, moving on to communication. We do not have anyone in our audience this evening for public comment regarding items not on our agenda. And any board announcements? All right. 
Um, so a couple days ago, I attended the Harvard Education. Um, they have a, a press and they basically do various webinars, but this one mm -hmm. happened to be um, at Improving Education for Students of Colors and they had like a very decorated panel of um, and so they just kind of went through some various questions. What's the experience of students of color in our public schools? What changes could we be making um, that would be most impactful to improving their experiences? And who is in the best position to implement those changes? And I felt it was really kind of, it was really helpful for me as a trustee because it was good to hear from, some of them were teachers, some of them were other people in education, but it was really interesting to see how they were all kind of approaching it from different angles, but all have the same goal. And so they, even though there are five different people, they had different perspectives, but they all kind of had the same overarching purpose. And I took notes, so if you guys want to, I'm happy to forward out my notes from the, the webinar. And it was free, so you know, if you want to get on that mailing list, it's, it's useful because I found a couple that have been interesting to watch. That's great. Can you say that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I take good notes. So. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yes. You do. <laughs> Any, anyone else? I am um, in my day job working with Marin Promise Partnership. We're part of a, a national consortium of cradle to career communities across the United States. So it's really looking at that um, integrated systems approach of early childhood education, K 8. Um, high school level and then college um, education and how I'll bring that together and they've been offering a lot of also webinars um, on everything from um, how to use data in decision making um, communications with a lot of it is like data informed <coughs> decision making um, equity-based facilitation for cross-sector stuff. But if anyone's interested, they, a lot of them are also open to other people. So if you're if you're interested in any any of those kinds of topics where it's like a integrated whole system from cradle to career, I'd be more than happy to share that too. So. I would be interested in that. Yeah, they've been doing. And they do a lot of um, <coughs> also really good facilitation on um, continuous improvement and results-based facilitation. So if you're interested in doing professional development on facilitation skills. They're really good at that. So. And I think since our announcement, <clears throat> since our last board meeting, we met with the Parent Equity Task Force and socialized our uh, proposed policy for mm -hmm. equity. So great. That's up and, up and moving. Great. Okay. And um, <coughs> correspondence, as always, is posted by anything we get by 3 o'clock today goes in communication. And now we can move on to presentation. And our first item is uh, recommended approval to increase the length of transitional kindergarten to be the same length as the kindergarten school day. And then the contract implications. Marcy, do you want to? Thank you. Um, what, uh, I, I wrote pretty detailed um, information in here. One of the things that I did not include, I just forgot all about it, is when would this go into effect? And if it is approved, it would begin in the 23-24 school year. So next school year, not this school year. We wouldn't increase in the middle of the year, but it would go into effect next year. And um, so as we, staff has been looking at the implementation of the expanded TK model, which the way that the state is expanding it is it has to do with um, by 25, 26, all four-year-olds will then have access, who turn four by September 1st of 2025, will be in the um, TK program. Um, but as we are looking at then the implications of the expansion to four-year-olds and what program are we providing in the Ross Valley School District, um, we took a look at what our neighboring school districts are doing and what their programs look like. And um, and back last year, when we thought we were going to be in basic aid or community-funded status this year, um, we would not have received any of the additional funding um, coming from the state or, or any um, anything like that. So we didn't look to touch our program for this school year. Um, but when we look at what we think is in the best interest of our um, students coming into the school district, um, our program right now is four hours a day, and we're looking to expand it to be the same length of uh, kindergarten, which would be roughly, um, uh, gosh, I forgot what I wrote here, uh, five hours and 25 minutes a day. 
Um, and so it'd be the same, like the education code um, is, uh, is, TK can be longer than kindergarten, it can be shorter than kindergarten, kindergarten can be longer or shorter, but um, it can't be less than four hours a day. So our current program meets the minimum um, minute requirements for operation of TK. <coughs> and as we think about um, having our kids come in to our schools, um, we also know that um, the expanded learning opportunities program is gonna begin next year. And that is in which the school district must be able to provide a nine hour in effect school day. It doesn't mean the actual school day, but the length of the school day for children um, could be up to nine hours at no additional cost for families that qualify for um, uh, socioeconomic, based on their socioeconomic status. And so we also know from experience that based on the length of our Kin or transitional kindergarten day right now that if there aren't enough families wanting daycare um, through the YMCA after the TK day ends and they call it the gap time so the end of TK to K that gap time or the end of K to first through fifth um, they're not able to offer those families on that campus the aftercare and so it's post a hardship where we know that at least at one of our schools manor, they haven't been able to have the YMCA program serve TK. So that doesn't serve our families very well either. Um, and so looking at um, being able to expand the school day for educational purposes for our kids, but also for what we know, and many more of our families nowadays, they are working. So there's not the luxury of picking up the child after school and they, they need a place for their kids to go. Um, if we expand TK, we would also be looking at adding art and music, just like our, to the same length of the um, amount of time that our kindergartners get, which is one session a week. Um, we're thinking actually the art would be 30 minutes and music would be 30 minutes. Right now kindergarten gets 45 of each. Um, and so looking at doing that a little bit differently. Um, the Yes Foundation, of course, um, would have an interest in, um, I think, uh, our expanding TK um, because of the timing of when they would be able to engage with families around fundraising. So right now with um, TK not getting any of the um, art or music uh, classes, uh, therefore, Yes um, doesn't begin to talk to the families until they um, hit their kids hit kindergarten. So it might help as an overall to ensure that TK is a part of our school district. It is the way that it's going. It's a new grade level coming in, um, in and of itself. So as I said, by 2025-26, all four-year-olds will have access to it. Um, it is a mandated program that we offer it. It's not mandated that a parent have their child attend, just like kindergarten is not mandated right now in the state of California. It's mandated that we offer it, but you don't have to have your child attend if you don't wish to. So we think overall, this is just a very cursory review, so any questions you may have um, would be in the best interest of our students and preparing them for kindergarten and beyond. Is getting them a longer school day where they get um, access to more socialization, more time um, to socialize, to do the pre-reading, pre-writing, pre-math, pre-everything um, skills that, um, that they would need in order to be successful when they hit um, kindergarten and beyond. Did I forget anything, Julia? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so any questions? Or, and I did put in here the anticipated cost. But just mind that um, that the costs that are look, uh, here are based on the current salary schedule. Um, as we all know, we haven't um, settled for the 2022-23, the current school year. So any increased cost to the salary schedule would increase these costs. The other thing that this doesn't take into consideration is what the employer costs will be for next school year. So this is based on what we know our employer costs now. We don't yet know like what workers' comp costs will be next year. So we don't we don't know that yet. And also the health and welfare benefits. Mm -hmm. So that's all part of negotiation. Those two, the salary and health and welfare, are part of negotiations, which we have not um, settled yet for this year or next. As far as like the number of students um, anticipated mm -hmm. in our budgeting, um, this isn't increasing. This is just expanding the day, so it's not adding, and we're not pushing the age back any more than we normally yeah. had been projecting to push it back, right? Yes, and the reason is is that um, if we were to um, expand 
the TK to, let's say, we wanted all four-year-olds next year to be able to attend regardless. We're not funded for were. all of them because... We don't receive funding, right. and that would be funding for two school years that we would not receive. But we may have so many students that we have to hire an extra teacher and more aides, but right. yet we're not receiving any funding for that. So this is based on the amount of staffing that we anticipate with the expansion next year of being um, children who turned five between um, September 2 and April 2. Right. That's next year's. And uh, what this may do is that having it be a longer day may actually attract more families, yeah. right? So even within that same age range, because of the coordination with the aftercare mm -hmm. and with the longer day, there may be families who would choose TK to have their child attend TK as opposed to staying in preschool because of this enhancement that's happening. Yeah, we would have done that two years ago with my daughter. Right. We, we kept her at the preschool because they had all day care. Right. Mm -hmm. And even though we had another daughter at Brookside already, right. that was not as convenient. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, maybe there are additional parents that would mm -hmm. consider then this TK program once right. the additional and care so is in look, terms of staffing, um, we are projecting that we'll need three TK classes district-wide next year, and that's based on the students who are either partially or fully registered for next year. But as Shelly just mentioned, once we um, are able to advertise this and put it out, we may see an increase of even more families, which may mean that we have to hire, let's say, a fourth teacher. Um, but if we do that, those new right, children right. will bring the dollars that will help to pay for. And uh, so the people the who've been registering have been registering under the current operating assumption, which is the shorter day, mm -hmm. not the because we haven't approved it. So yes, and okay. we will notify them if it is approved as right. soon as you approve it, like tomorrow. Right. Um, send them all an email and let them know that this is the length of the school day. Too. And then we'd have to update all the information that On we have, so any new out, yeah. hurt people coming in will know that it's a yeah. full day. Okay. Well, are we? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Would that also include information on like the expanded learning opportunities after school? Like that? once we have that program together, yes, um, because that program, any family can access it for cost. The Y, it's yeah. The YMCA, and we are starting to again resume those conversations with the YMCA. Chris started last year, um, but then the state postponed the implementation of the LOP for one school year. So we stopped conversation with them until this year. But Chris has resumed conversation. So we are anticipating entering into a partnership. Um, and the dollars that are going to come in from the state for ELOP aren't likely that they're even going to fully fund the program. So it's just what they give us. But we do know in the cost analysis that we did, if we tried to run our own yeah. daycare program, it would not at all near fund itself. Um, but we may need to enter into some agreements with the why, but that's not a topic for tonight, so I won't say anything more on that, but um, but related to, yes, yeah, so that we'll be coming back um, to that uh, future in terms of, so right now we don't have anything to tell the families because there is also a potential with the governor's budget. Who knows what, if they're even gonna implement it next year and it'll happen, you know? So we need to wait a little bit more, but we need to start planning. Right. But it does but it does close the time gap sure. though. So mm -hmm. families who do want to also use mm -hmm. the Y. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it easier. <clears throat> and we'll talk I guess it's not on the agenda. I was kind of going into that direction about capacity mm -hmm. at the Y. Because that's always been a problem mm -hmm. for us. If we don't sign up immediately, then there's no yeah. Slots in the room, yeah. so and they 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 can absolutely add children or sorry staffing that they need. If I remember right, I think it's seven children to be able to pay for a new, a new employee. Right. So they do need to have that in order to be able to. Um, and be, and there is you know they've experienced some staffing shortages exactly. too. Exactly. You know, so yeah. it may be definitely they're unable to fully staff it the way that it would. But we would implement it as allowable under the education code or the, the, the ruling around it, um, the way that we can. If there's like, you can do these grade levels first, and then if you have the bandwidth or whatever, then we would look at that, but we have to dig back into what are the requirements of ELOP. Okay. Because it's not just the longer school day, it also expands into um, the recesses, yeah. the, the school breaks. Okay. 30 extra days, and I met with um, 
the YMCA two weeks ago, and I have another meeting scheduled with them next week. Because at the very, even the ELOP aside, this might allow them to offer TK, uh -huh. which and they haven't? It, yes, they haven't, ha they haven't been able to unless there are a minimum of seven families who want that gap care. Uh -huh. And at Manor, as an example, there were only two. But now um, there isn't any gap care. There wouldn't be, there any, won't gap be any gap care, care which yeah. means TKs and yeah. can just go, go in, in just like just the like kindergarten. kindergarten. In that other gap time between kindergarten and the first through fifth end of the which school they day, do have. Okay. which then they've had enough kids. So it. that okay. it should completely Use eliminate that. problems for families and daycare needs okay. as well. Great. Okay. Great. Any other questions about this expanded? And this is, you do need a motion for us to... You need a motion, and if you can, please, if you if anybody is going to make a motion, just please add for implementation beginning in the 23-24 school year, along with your motion. Which is kind of a long um, statement that you'll be making. <laughs> just reiterate, 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 re reiterating exactly the uh, staff recommendation. Well... I had a child in TK that had the short day and we had to like, I had to hustle and talk to all the other parents that I knew to be like, you need to sign up for the Y or they're not gonna have it for us. So I am very much in favor of this. Um, I move that we approve to increase the transitional kindergarten school day to be the same length as the kindergarten school day and increase the length of the contract day for TK certificated teacher positions from 0.7 to 1.0 FTE. And for the TK classified paraprofessional positions from four to six hours per day for the school year started 2023-24. I have a second. Motion and a second. <clears throat> and then we will do a vote. Rachel? Aye. Chris? Aye. Daniel? Aye. Shelly? Aye. And Ryan? Aye. All right. Motion passes. Thank you so much. It's going to be so exciting. Yes. All right. Um, second item then <coughs> is a recommended approval of year one of a three year contract by in between the Ross Valley School District and Stephen Roach Accountancy Corporation for our annual financial audit services. And so this particular contract uh, or this auditor is the same firm that has been auditing the district for years. And so this is just a renewal. Uh, our contract ended at the end of the last school year. And so we do need a new auditor. And so this would just continue those services. How often do we change auditors? Because I know that sometimes you're supposed to do it every X number of years and whatnot. So you do have to have a new uh, audit uh, partner on the, the particular audit. And so next year, Stephen Roach will not be the person for us. We do have somebody else from his firm that will be doing it. Okay. He's already let me know that. Okay, so because he does have to swap. And that's required under the law. Well, not really law under best practices. Audit standards. Audit standards. Yeah. I asked him that last week or last yeah, week. Right. Back, that's exactly what they do with it work all the time. I was like, who's gonna be doing this first next time? Yeah. <laughs> Any other procedural questions from either of our financial folks? No. All right. And then again, this is a uh, an action item where we need to take action to approve the staff recommended uh, year one of three year contract. Do we have to approve it every year? We do have you approve it every year, even though this is three year. We bring it back every year. So we're just approving the year one of this year. Okay. So I will move to approve year one of the three-year contract with Stephen Roche Accounting Corporation for the required annual financial audit services for the fiscal years ending June 30th, 2023, June 30th, 2024, and June 30th, 2025. I'll second it. Motion and the second will do a vote. Chris? Aye. Rachel? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Daniel? Aye. Shelly, aye. Carry forward with our contract. Um, on to consent actions. We have uh, six items on our consent agenda. Are there any um, items that anyone had a 
question about or needed to um, look at further? If not, we can entertain a consent motion. Move consent. Motion. Anyone else? I'll go ahead and second. So we have a motion and a second, Rachel? Aye. Shelley, aye. Brian? Aye. Chris? Aye. And Daniel? Aye. All right. <coughs> consent is moved. All consent is moved. And on to board business. So committee updates and reports, and then we'll do that before we do committee assignments. So the first one is committee updates and reports. Um, Christy, did you want to say anything else about the I'm sorry, I brought that up earlier. We should have brought it up for this moment. See, <laughs> so we, okay. we went through this whole process and I didn't even do it correctly. <laughs> um, well, I wasn't sure if there was anything else that you wanted to add. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty well-attended and productive meeting for the Parent Equity Task Force. We had a lot of, I think, uh, spirited conversations um, around uh, Deborah's facilitation. Um, again, we... Uh, socialized the uh, board policy, equity policy that we've worked on. And um, I think in general, uh, I think the meetings have really taken a turn to have uh, increased productivity and I think an awareness of excitement and action back in the room, which I was happy to see. That's great. Yeah. And the next steps then on that policy, because that is something that we had hoped was going to come yeah. in front of us and by the end will, of the year. Are we on track? Is on track. So mm -hmm. next step is, uh, I think we may have Soups Council before Delight. I forget I which one. Delight's actually next week on Monday. Oh, it is. Yes, you're right. So yeah. it'll go to Delight for, um, and the questions that we asked the, um, for feedback on are, how does the draft board policy, racial equity board policy resonate with you? And then how do you see yourself for this policy being implemented and the implications for it? So those were the, the feedback points we want um, we wanted to get on. So I don't think even as of today, Julia, there are no comments yet from our Parent Guardian Equity Task Force. So we'll do the same process with Delight, Soup's Council, mm -hmm. and then um, our subcommittee who is made up of uh, Chris, Raymona, mm -hmm. Little, uh, mm -hmm. Taylor from mm -hmm. both um, Brookside, but you're now on there still as a parent, still as a trustee. You're both. You're serving. You started as a parent, so now you're both. Doing it hats. all. Doing yeah. it all. <laughs> Doing it all. Shelly Hamilton, our board president, Julia Wolcott, and myself um, have been working on that. And um, so we'll begin to then take a look at any feedback or input we receive. And so we actually, by the way it's looking, if the feedback is the way it, it continues is we probably should be ahead of track being able to take it to you because we were going to originally bring it to you at the May 31st meeting mm -hmm. and then um, back again for first reading and review and then back again on June 14th. Yeah, that's for, um, question. So policies approval. have two here, two public areas. Yeah, now they sometimes don't need them. Uh -huh. You can decide based on any <coughs> feedback or input that so that we always set up the agenda to, to read okay. first reading and recommended approval or second reading, however it's worded. Right. I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, it allows you to do it in one fell swoop if you wish. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other committee updates? I, I'm not going to regale you with all of my notes from my trip to Sacramento yesterday. Ah. I took copious notes. Um, but as you recall, I, uh, I decided to go. Um, I know that, you know, we had, we had a lot of teachers who um, came and spoke with us once and felt like, you know, um, our lar largest expense is on staff and human, humans in the district to um, enliven the mission and the purpose and be with our kids. And it's a huge budget issue. And so um, this was every year the Marin County School Boards Association organizes a trip to go to Sacramento to meet with, um, and I think it's the same time every year. So this is the time of the year right after all of the um, bills have been submitted. So all of the bills have been submitted. And I think there was something like 
total of like 2,000 something or another bills that are now in front of the legislature. Not all of those for education, that's the total. Um, and so I think they go around this time every year after all the bills have been submitted. So sometime, in January, January. sometime in January or February. Um, they rent a bus so you don't have to drive, you have lunch, and then you have um, various presentations and conversations. So we met with the legislative advocates for a lot of the um, professional associations, so California School Boards Association, the Coalition for Adequate School Housing, who deals with um, school facilities, the uh, CSBA CASBO was there, so that's the California Association of School Business Officials, the, um, the government relations person for that. Um, the person from AXA, which is the Association of California School Administrators, which I know you're mostly involved with them. Um, so it was really, I mean, it was a really good conversation. I was actually also had a great time listening to, there was five young people who came with us, high school students, who are on, they are the youth representatives on the school boards for the San Rafael City Schools. TAM has one. I think it was, I think it was from TAM, and, and so they were there as well and speaking to their legislative people and lobbyists and stuff. They had some great questions and got to ride on the bus with them, had some really good conversations with them. And that was, that was a, one of the highlights for me. Um, and then we met with Damon Connolly, who recently was elected. So met with Damon Connolly. We also met with, um, at the end of the day, uh, with Senator Mike McGuire, who is now the uh, majority, I don't want to mess this up, but he is, he's moved into being the majority leader. So he is just under the speaker. He, he explained his role as that the, uh, the speaker is like the president and he's like the CEO. So he kind of makes sure everything's running um, on his side of things. So it was really good. I mean, the main things were, a lot of it was budget. Um, a lot of conversations around TK mm-hmm. as being an unfunded mandate, especially the facilities, which I'm really happy that we're not having to deal with at this point. And hopefully don't have to. And hopefully that we won't have to moving forward, but there are a number of school districts that, um, you know, want to expand but don't have the facilities that are required for that early early grade facilities that, are, that need to have it. So there was a lot of conversation around uh, TK funding, um, the COLA a lot, you know, a lot of it was advocating for making sure that the COLA and the LCFF funding um, was funded as much as possible. Most speakers were um, cautiously optimistic, I would say maybe a little less optimistic than they had been before. There's still quite a bit of a gap uh, between revenue and expenses in the governor's budget. So we did meet with the LAO, the legislative analyst office person, and they've made some alternative recommendations than what the governor is recommending to close that budget gap. Um, There was conversation around making sure that um, we don't move back into an era of block grants and programmatic funding and stay with the LCFF local control, allowing a little bit of history that that was started under Governor Brown, who kind of got rid of all of the, what's it called? It's not block grant funding, but programmatic funding, where it's just categorical allocated, which gives you a lot less. and. Um, called it subsidiarity yeah and so there was a little there was some lobbying to say let's not go back to that era um that probably will need to continue to have to happen so that we don't go back into that um and i've got a lot of notes but i'm not going to go i'm just trying to go through and then also a lot of conversation around um the educator pipeline and retention of educators and recruitment of educators and funding for educators and really 
how important and how that's just a huge issue across the state. How forward thinking were they in terms of that pipeline for the future state of teachers? The, the most, I think, um, how forward were they thinking? A lot of it was around, was financial stuff. Yeah. You know, a lot of it was financial. There was conversation around housing, especially in Marin because of the uh, project over by San Quentin that's underway. There's another one in the pipeline at Indian Valley campus for College of Marin mm -hmm. um, that's underway. So that was kind of one of the pieces of it. The inter most interesting idea that came up was um, funding and programs for credentialing for paraprofessionals who want to move into the teaching profession so that if we have people in our district who are working as classroom aides or language and you know all those different people that that are already part of um, our community of um, educators but in paraprofessional situations helping them to get credentialed if they want to um, so there's some interesting conversation around different programs that might get funded for that, mm -hmm. um, that maybe while they're still working, those kinds of things. So I thought that was kind of one of the most innovative <coughs> things that was talked with, about with that. Um, there is a thing called the Golden State Teacher Fund, which is a credentialing program uh, to help pay for teacher residency and teacher credentialing programs that they talked about. Um, also expanding, and that's where uh, it's like a student debt relief, like Teach for America kind of deal. It's a student debt relief if you teach in schools. I don't know whether any of our schools would qualify for it because it has to be high need schools that you teach in. Um, so, and that was the other thing is there was other things that came up, like they're talking about an equity multiplier, which was, um, in addition to like concentration and supplemental grant funding, supplemental funding on top of the LCFF that we, that districts get for foster youth and English language learners. The supplemental goes on a one-to-one -one basis with kids in those categories, but we don't get the concentration grant because that's, and that the, the equity multiplier that's being proposed is at such a, um, such a concentration rate that it only is really going to affect, I think they said like 600, 800 schools in the entire state because you have to be, it's it's for districts that have like 90% students with that qualify for free meal supplement. So there's some alternatives that they're having conversations around. 90%? 90%. So if your student body is 90% and it's 90% totally free, not reduced. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. So the legislative, whatever the LAO is, has an alternate recommendation to um, change the supplemental and concentration money instead of going with the equity multiplier. So that may then have some impact on us, um, which I thought was an interesting conversation. Uh, but it was a great. Um, it was a great. You know, everything you ever wanted to know about education funding kind of day and talking back and forth. It was small enough that you can really have conversations. So um, if you have any other questions, I can pull out more of my notes, but I'm not going to flood you with them. All right. Okay. Then... We are on to, oh, our committee assignments, thank you. Committee assignments. All right, so this is now with Daniel joining us, and welcome to your first meeting, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so we're re-looking at um, the board uh, committee assignments. So um, I provided these to you as part of our agenda packet. Um, here and so um, this isn't something that you have to vote on these are just kind of you reach agreement on what you want to do so I know we didn't do this too long ago because Chris just joined us um, in December so that was the last time you did this and now we're doing it again um, but this should get us through the end of this school year and then we'll start um, in August for the 23-24 school year we'll have the conversation again so what so 
are you what what committees do you think you might be interested in so I was thinking about the, the roundtable committee mm -hmm. um, and the superintendents council those two as well as the uh, joint legislative advisory committee the joint and J JLAC Okay. Yeah. Um, that's it. What? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still new. How long can I use that card for? Not long. <laughs> I was and on it's done. I was on <laughs> you just used it. That's it. No more. Uh, so those look like they had um, openings. So we can just go ahead and yeah. add you on to the... Boom, done, excellent. That's okay. great, appreciate you joining on to those. Thank you. And so let me ask this then. Um, so you won't be joining um, any of them as an alternate, you will be now just another participant on them. Yes. 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 That's what your intention you were hoping is that you get you to attend, get to go. Yes. not only in Shelley's absence. Correct, yeah, okay. I would like Perfect. to participate. Okay. Great, All right. great. And then if I do need to be asked. Yeah, then at least we have one. Might may happen. <coughs> All right. Great. Awesome. Well, then, for the rest of you, I mean, Daniel's, you can always twist his arm a little bit more, but is there <laughs> anything else that any of you were thinking, like, oh, wait a minute, I know I signed on for this, but my things have changed in my life, and I'd like to revisit it? We can always do that yeah, at think, any time. Yeah, yeah, this is something we should revisit occasionally, just sort of check in with each other every couple of months. I think. Mean, Great. Yeah. And like we said, if, if somebody can't go to a meeting, then you can just put it, you Excellent. know, let Marcy yeah. know and put a shout out and we can find somebody who might be able to go. All right. Okay. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> we have two regular meeting minutes to approve. The first one is February 8th, and we'll do these one at a time. And just note that um, Rachel caught a typo on the February eighth, and I'm not sure I know what that was. Um, just do you, either of you, sh uh, Rachel or Teresa, remember? It said received and heard, and it should have just been received. Great, and so that was comment. that typo yeah. was corrected. And under, what under E four? E four. Thank yeah. you. And what um, is up on the board docs is the corrected version. So just want to let you know that was corrected. Awesome. Any other <clears throat> on that one? If not, I move that we approve the regular meeting minutes for February 8th, 2023. The second. All right, motion and the second, Rachel. Aye. And Chris. Aye. And Shelley. Aye. And Ryan. Aye. All right. And for February 13th. And I'm, I, you abstain, sorry. I didn't even bother to ask you, but do we, we should, you should still, you know, I yeah, should still ask still and then you get to say, oh, sorry. Abstain. Thank you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> didn't know what to do. Okay. Uh, February 13th. Were there any, no. Changes. No changes or amendments. So I'll entertain a motion on that one. I'll move that we approve the special meeting minutes for February 13th, 2023. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Rachel? Hi. Ryan? Hi. Chris? Hi. Shelley? Hi. And Daniel? I abstain. It's all about him. I know, but I wasn't <laughs> sure if he was seated at the end of it, but I guess he can't. He still abstains. We okay. don't have to make yes. it. Yes. Oh, good thing to do. All right. <clears throat> And we are on to Superintendent Cabinet Report and Updates. All right. So with those, let's see. Chris Carson. I actually don't have anything this evening. Okay. All right. Thank you. Director of Student Services, Eric Sable. It's spring and the you know buds are starting to blossom and it means transition season. So we have lots of energy and on the special ed side for um, starting to prepare for all the transition work from early intervention to school age, fifth grade to sixth. And then of course our eighth graders heading off to the high school. So that represents a tremendous amount of work across all our teammates and um, our friends in the TAM district. Um, definitely a process that, you know, start to finish is a couple months. 
um, our wonderful um, English language development uh, teachers and staff are working on um, administering the summative LPACs, um, uh, which we do each spring um, to measure student proficiency in English. And then from there, determine if they um, are eligible to remain in EL status or if they're ready to exit um, based on proficiency. Um, so, you know, those are, those are two big endeavors um, underway. Um, we have our next uh, DLAC meeting on March 15th. Um, and, uh, you know, going to in part talk about uh, that process of um, the summit of LPAC and also reclassification and um, the, the structure and nature of those meetings. So, um, and, uh, you know, I'll leave it at that for now. Julia, Curriculum Instruction, Nature. I also attended the Parent Guardian Equity Task Force meeting and really appreciated, um, in particular, the feedback that we received from our parent guardians around the um, implementation of the anti-bias grant. Mm -hmm. And next steps there, we have a March 15th meeting with the state where we should find out more information about that grant um, and when it might be funded. Um, or when we might receive funding. Um, and then Marcy and I have lined up a couple of um, follow-up meetings with Deborah McKnight, one for the two of us to kind of pull all of our documents together and all of our information and begin that planning, and then another one with our administrative team um, to do some shared planning there. And that's all I have in that sentiment. All right, well, and then from superintendents um, is uh, just ju both Julie and I, I think, well, I had fun. I'm sure you did, too. Um, uh, Eleanor Steiner, who is a parent at um, the Hidden Valley Campus, um, she does um, a kind of an equity podcast that goes into the Hidden Valley newsletters, and she had asked us to participate in the one um, of why um, it's important and what we teach and how we teach um, black history. And so that was a lot of fun um, doing it. Of course, you know, knowing you have to record yourself and all that, that part's not the fun part, but digging into your why and really looking at what we do and why we do it and how we do it, that part was um, really invigorating and I loved it. So um, can't wait to hear that on Friday when the um, newsletter comes out. Um, and then um, I won't add anything more to I just agree with everything you've all said about the Parent Guardian Equity Task Force. It was a great meeting. Looking forward to continuing the work that we have ahead of us with Deborah, and really can't wait for the anti bias grant to really know because we're in limbo land right now. We can't really get started. We're not sure of these, whatever the rules might be. We don't know what Julie is going to learn on the 15th, so we're kind of in limbo. So nice to get going. And um, I think with that, I'm, that'll be it for this evening. Right. Well, our uh, tonight we have our we have a closed session, so we're going to be moving into a closed session. Normally, we have to do this beforehand, but but tonight we are now going to move into our closed session, um, and we have one, two, three items uh, in tonight's closed session. We have. Conference with real property negotiators on 199 Porteous Avenue. We have a conference with labor negotiators pursuant to government code section 54957.6. All employee groups, RBTA, CSEA, confidential classified, classified management, and certificated management. And we have um, a public employee discipline dismissal release reassignment item. Um, so we are going to. Um, recess into closed session. If I can say that because we anticipate the closed session lasting approximately, it could last up to two hours. At this point, we're going to not continue the live streaming as okay. what we have when we come out, out of closed session is just meeting review and adjournment, um, is we will be able to stop the live recording and then Chris will do the, um, the re recording of the, the recording closed. of right the report out from closed session through the end of the meeting that won't be live streamed. It'll just be part of the meeting recording that Jorge will splice together so that there will be one recording of tonight's meeting um, that gets posted to the website. So at the point when we're ready to move into closed session, um, Jorge will let us know, the live streaming will stop, and then um, Jorge and Teresa will go home for the evening, and um, so will Julia and Eric, and then um, Chris and I will remain with all of you for the closed session items, and um, 
and we'll be able to move into that. All right, so uh, I think we are ready to move into that now. Yes, okay. and at uh, 7.59, we will um, recess, to close. recess to closed session. Right. All right, it is 10.20, and we are uh, reconvening in open session, um, out of closed session, and there is nothing to report out of our closed session. Um, we only have future board topics, board direction, but I believe that staff has all the direction we do. from our com conversations, and um, probably no meeting debrief, unless there's anything, anyone... Nope. Um, all right, so we do not need a motion to continue past 1030, and I will go ahead and adjourn us at 1020.